A clear-cut no to the Ashraf Waterloo project was delivered this morning to the government of Belize in the form of 20,132 signed petitions. The signatures were collected from across the country in hopes of putting an end to the Port of Belize Cruise Tourism and Port Expansion Project. The proposal has been rejected and labeled by the environmental community as hazardous to Belize's Great Barrier Reef. The threat is also of concern to residents of the Port Loyola community and the Federation of Cruise Tourism Associations, FECTAB. The organization's President Emeritus, Tom Greenwood, who delivered the petition this morning, explained its significance. The Barrier Reef is sacrosanct. It must survive at any and every cost. Each of us, whether we're seamen or farmers in the inland, remember what the Barrier Reef does for us. Two things, it feeds us and it protects us. Because of that Barrier Reef, and there are several layers of it, hurricanes that come to Belize are weakened because then the waves don't come as tsunamis. If we didn't have that Barrier Reef, there'd be tsunamis 18, 20 feet high rolling inland. We don't want that. The main concern surrounding the project's construction has to do with its previous plan to dump 7.5 million cubic meters of dredged material into the sea. However, according to the Minister of Sustainable Development, Orlando Habet, the company is now planning to dump those materials near shore. From the information that we get would be from what the technical staff does their assessment. And then sometimes these developers might bring in people who are professionals, these people who have worked in other countries doing certain things. And so you start looking at who knows more, right? Because they will, they will, they will yeah. propose their thing and then we, our, our, our staff will, will do theirs. And so there's always that thing that we have to have that capacity building continuous so that our people are always uh, updated on some of these things. Um, but for sure, if that is a problem to the near shore, that will have to be assessed, uh, I mean, really uh, diligently uh, to a T and make certain that everything is complied with. Commencing tomorrow, the Department of the Environment will be holding public consultation sessions where citizens can engage with Waterloo representatives. This is after the project's Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA, was rejected by the National Environmental Appraisal Committee, NIAC, for several reasons, one of which was the lack of sufficient consultations with persons living in the community. Part of the EIA process uh, requires that you look at, uh, especially when you talk about sustainable development, that you look at the economic side, the social side, and the environmental side. So this is part of the social side where, whether you're doing a consultation on a one-to-one on -one basis, in a group, uh, in a community, so this is part of it, and that has to be taken into consideration when uh, a, a decision is going to be made. As we know, the, uh, the Department of Environment does the assessment of the IA. They make a, a recommendation or at least a, a, a summer report that goes to the NIAC, and then the NIAC comes back with a recommendation to the, uh, to the department saying yes, no, or they, they, they recommend a yes or a recommend a no. Habet, who filled in today for the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister, says that the company's resubmission of the EIA was based on the ground that its previous rejection did not mean the project was squashed. Everybody who is an investor, whether you're foreign or, or Belizean, if you submit a project and it is denied because you are at fault in not submitting a certain information or not doing a, a certain study, I don't see why it should be denied if you can come later on and remedy that. I mean, you do that in, in, in everything. The Save the Reef initiative is being spearheaded by Tom Greenwood, who says that while he supported the Stake Bank Port Corral Cruise Port, he is outright against the Waterloo project. He claims that his motive is not in support of the owner of Stake Bank Enterprise Limited, Michael Finstein, but in that of the Belizean people. In my lifetime, project after project after project fail. So I reached the stage where I said, guess what? Maybe I should be supporting projects. Maybe I should be making noise. I've known the Feinsteins most of my life. Those people have helped so many people, it's not funny. Like other, I, I can mention, like, like the Bowen and Bowens. They've helped so many people. And I can mention many others who've helped so many people. So in my activism, I decided, well, maybe it's time we return this and help. And that project to do something about uh, uh, what we know as Stake Bank, it's pretty good because I know that there are other entities that had their eyes on State Bank. Entities that I know are seen in this country at all. 
All right? Because that state bank was just waiting to be developed. All in all, Habet conceded that he believes having more than two cruise tourism ports in the same area is not the best idea. He says that the push by residents is admirable, but may not be enough to stop the project from being approved because the ultimate decision is based on the outcome of the company's new EIA and its public consultations. I think that what we have to do is look at the, the EIA process, look at the legislation, what is legal, what is illegal, what will put us in trouble with the, with the law. And frankly, <laughs> when we get sued and we go to court and we have to pay, it's not the government that's in power that's paying, it's all of us Belizeans that, that have to pay. So we have to make certain that we do things right on all, on, on all sides so that at the end of the day, we can proceed with uh, national development that is sustainable for all of us, beneficial for all of us, but not one that will burden all of us and our children and grandchildren for many, many years. Vigilvers, Love News.